All right, America compared. Why other countries that treat their people so much better? Why other countries treat their people this so much better? This episode and others like it are made possible by the generous support of my patrons on Patreon. If you'd like to help me make more content like this, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash second thought. I'm going to say something that will probably offend many of my viewers. Let me preface this by saying that I, as an American, include myself in the following statement. Americans are quite possibly the most willfully ignorant people on the face of the planet. Why would anyone get triggered by that? It's literally true. If you get mad at this, you're a fucking idiot. Like... We are. We are literally the dumbest hogs. We have the most resources, we have the most capability of helping our own, and refuse to do so, and very clearly advocate and agitate for a, a, a uh, government that won't. Like, that will openly refuse to do that. And it's we have access to the sum total of all human knowledge, yet our understanding of the world rarely extends beyond our own country. And even then, the majority of Americans believe in a vision of the country that does not actually exist. It's not that we're stupid, we just tend to blindly accept that the US is the greatest place on earth, and therefore don't see any reason to educate ourselves about the realities of the rest of the world. In this episode, we're going to pull back the curtain on how America actually compares to other countries, and consider why the richest country on earth fails to treat its people with dignity and fairness. I'm going to provide a list of important topics, then for each item we'll compare the American- Did the Biden team contact you about running a get out the vote ad campaign? Um... I don't think so. What the fuck do they want? I don't think they did. ...experience with that of citizens from other nations. Hopefully by providing a side-by-side -side comparison, you'll be able to see the stark contrast between how most Americans see their country and how it really stacks up against the competition. To give you an idea of just how skewed the American perception of our country really is, let's start with a pretty shocking example. Compensation for what are considered low-skill jobs. We'll take the quintessential American company, McDonald's. McDonald's is the world's largest restaurant chain by revenue. It operates. Dude, are we seriously about to watch another video about how great it is that Sweden pays their citizens to take a shit? Yeah, until every fucking moron that finds its way into my chat that, like, unironically comes in here just to troll gets the fucking message that, yes, it is tight and that, yes, that is the right way to go about it. Not only just paid to take a shit, but also paid to go get sloshed for uh, during like their annual three month fucking summer break. Okay. Uretimabi. Operates in over a hundred countries and serves over 69 million customers every day. As of 2018, McDonald's was the second largest private employer, with 1.7 million employees, behind Walmart's 2.3 million. How many times have you heard someone refer to McDonald's jobs or workers- Okay, actually, I don't know if uh, Sweden gets three months, but most European countries have really generous and really long, um, like, at least two months. This says, I have six week paid vacation per year here in Sweden. Derogatory manner. For some reason, people who work at McDonald's are seen as inferior or lazy or have any number of other unfair and unkind assessments leveled at them. This probably stems from the old notion of flipping burgers being a job anyone can perform. But the animosity towards low wage workers has grown significantly in the past few decades. And in America, McDonald's workers really do suffer a low wage. My man said, wait, you don't have three months summer break in the USA? LOL! What break, dude? We don't even have paid sick leave, dude! What are you talking about? What? What do you mean a break? <laughs> what? Ah! He thought... He thought we got summer break, dude? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Oh my God. That was a good one. Fuck. Oh, he meant for school? Yeah, no. Schools have it. Wait, you don't actually have paid sick leave or paid vacation at all? It just depends on your job, but most jobs don't. No.
Bro, people are actually shocked. Are you guys serious? Wait, oh my god, motherfuckers are shocked. They're like, wait, you don't have paid break? Are you serious or are you trolling? You didn't know this? What happens if you're sick? What happens if you're sick, you think? You fucking suck it up and sneeze on a burgle, okay? That's what happens when you're sick. In New Zealand, we get five sick days and four weeks a year to leave at every job. Yeah, what do you mean what happens when you get sick? Currently, there are no federal legal requirements for paid sick leave. For companies subject to the Family and Medical Leave Act, FMLA, the act does require unpaid sick leave. Okay? FMLA provides up to 12 weeks of unpaid leave for certain medical situations for either the employee or a member of the employee's immediate family. In many instances, paid leave may be substituted for unpaid FMLA leave. Employees are eligible to take uh, family and medical leave if they have worked for their employer for at least 12 months and have worked for at least 1,250 hours over the previous 12 months and work for a location where at least 50 employees are employed by the same employer within 75 miles. Keep voting for Republicans, baby! Woo! Right to work, baby. I love the way that sounds, motherfucker. Hell yeah. Why the fuck would I pay union dues when I can get a new TV? That's what Big Boss Daddy told me. Bitch in America, even if you get pregnant, like... <laughs> We we only have recently secured like maternal leave. And even that was up to question. My girlfriend's a nurse and didn't even get paid time off when she had COVID because she had only been there for three months. Oh yeah, wait till you find out about pregnancy leave. Like it's like the first it's like three months, right? If you can get it. Salary in the U.S. for high-skilled workers is way higher than EU salary. How is that a counter to, like, anything we're talking about like that's and it's because of fucking idiots like that you understand it's because of idiots like that that we don't ever have progress because idiots like that are like nah dude actually like fuck fuck everyone else i'm gonna get mine meanwhile if you have that kind of fucking brain disease you're probably never gonna be a fucking high salaried skilled worker anyway so shut the fuck up and even then it's not even true but we're not even gonna talk about that it's like it's like when fucking people talk about, you know, like the top marginal tax rate being like 70% plus in these Scandinavian countries and how that's communism and devastating. Meanwhile, Norway has more billionaires per capita than we fucking do in the United States. You know what I mean? Or so, is, so does Sweden. Oh, their taxes are so fucking crazy. It's like, well, why the fuck do they have more billionaires than we do then per capita? List of minimum annual leave by... <laughs> Look at that minimum. Look at that minimum. Look at how blue that gets over there. America. No mandatory vacation or no data at all. <laughs>
USA, baby. Oh, shit. In the majority of nations, including all industrialized nations, except the United States, advances in employee relations have seen the introduction of statutory agreements for minimum employee leave from work. That is the amount of entitlement to paid vacation and public holidays. Several companies will offer contractually more time depending on the sector. Companies in the law may also differ as to whether public holidays are counted as a part of the minimum leave. There is no federal or state statutory minimum paid vacation or paid public holidays. Paid leave is at the discretion of the employers to its employees. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, 77% of private employers offer paid vacation to their employees. Full-time employees earn on average 10 vacation days after one year of service. Similarly, 77% of private employers give their employees paid time off during public holidays. <laughs> on average, eight holidays per year. Some employers offer no vacation at all. <laughs> The average number of paid vacation days offered by private employers is 10 days after one year of service, 14 days after five years, 17 days after 10 years, and 20 days after 20 years. So like in Norway or Finland, if you could get 20 paid vacation days, you can only get that after 20 years of toiling the land in your serfdom, okay? Your feudal lord will offer you the same amount of fucking uh, benefits only after you have... Given your soul to the company for 20 fucking years, dude. A system I have no problem with. This is the perfect system. Most jobs in the U.S. with both paid sick leave and vacation or management or jobs that require four-year degrees. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Our productivity strong, brother. Hell yeah. Even my child neolib hellhole is better than your shithole. Hey, Rumbo's party. There's a reason for that, actually. The reason why uh, Chile might come across, despite like uh, being uh, destroyed by neoliberalism, um, the reason why Chile comes across as uh, having stronger labor protections in certain fields is because you have a higher rate of unionization in your country that has been devastated by our economists and our economic theories, okay? Even in your country of Chile or Chile, your unionization rate in your workforce is 15%. That's four percentage points higher than the American uh, union, unionized uh, labor force. In our country, we got 10%. In Chile, they have 15%. Just always remember that. That's why when I say, if you want to destroy America then vote Republican. Like, there's nothing better you can do. You want to destroy America? You got to vote Republican. And it's not an accident. Countries with higher union ra unionization rates, of course, have more fucking benefits. But here in America, unions are demonized. As of 2020, the average crew member at McDonald's makes $9 per hour. The average McDonald's cashier makes $8 per hour. The federal minimum wage in the United States is $7.25, a rate which has not been raised in over a decade and which should not be considered a reasonable wage for any position, considering the fact that a full-time minimum wage worker cannot afford to rent a two-bedroom apartment anywhere in the United States and can't afford a one-bedroom apartment in over 95% of U.S. counties. Now, the all-too-common response to data like this is something like, 
Well, yeah, it's not a hard job. You should just find a better one. Here's a simple question. Should any job, regardless of technical skill required- Republicans would literally melt the poor. No matter what race they are, by the way, white too. They have so much disdain for the poor whites. Like they, they just, they're hogs. They're, they are literal vote pigs for them, right? Like they would literally melt the poor for biomatter if they could make a tidy profit off of it. You understand? If you think about Alec, the American Enterprise Institute, the Heritage Foundation, these motherfuckers would literally and have very successfully over the course of the past uh, couple decades, like dismantled all labor protections whatsoever. The Federalist Society then also has uh, put in place, uh, you know, Supreme Court justices that would uh, declare it constitutional from an originalist perspective, of course. Uh, the Founding Fathers actually wanted to melt the poor for biomatter. Um, you don't understand this. You just don't have the big legal brain that I have. Uh, I'm a, a constitutional law professor and an originalist. Like, they would literally do that if they could. Okay, if they could get away with it, and they, in a lot of circumstances, do get away with it, they, they would do that. Okay? They would melt you for biomatter if they could make a tidy profit off of it. Fired, pay workers so little that they cannot afford to rent even the smallest place to live. Not to mention other necessities like utilities, food, and medicine. Absolutely not. That is inhumane and cruel, especially coming from the second largest employer in the richest country on the planet. Other notable objections include, McDonald's has to make a profit. If they pay their workers more, they might go out of business. First of all, if you can't pay your workers a fair wage, your company should not be in business. End of story. But again, McDonald's is not struggling to make ends meet. In 2019, McDonald's raked in $21 billion in revenue. But no matter how obvious the exploitation of low-wage workers, Americans are hell-bent on praising the very companies doing the exploiting. Take this article on Reader's Digest, for example. It's titled, This is what McDonald's workers really get paid. You see that and think, oh, nice, finally some news showing how poorly these workers are compensated. Then you scroll down and, nope, they're actually praising McDonald's, saying things like, the food chain is also great for paying their workers fairly, and McDonald's is one of the highest paying fast food chains in the United States. This level of sycophancy is insane. If eight or nine dollars an hour is some of the highest when I think about McDonald's, I think, you know, well-paid workers that are happy to be there. That's what I think of. Pay in the industry, that doesn't- Dude, corporate journalism is so fucking disgusting. And then people get mad. And then people get fucking mad at me when I say, like, the media is absolutely an institutional propaganda arm of capital owners, okay? Like, the media can be good. Right? There are great journalists out there, but there are few and far between. Like, there is not, this is not normal. They are an anomaly. All right? It doesn't indicate that McDonald's is paying fairly. It indicates that a massive chunk of the population is being paid poverty wages. This is where taking an international perspective is so critical. If all you see is feel-good stories about how well McDonald's workers are paid... Also, this is literally making me crave McDonald's. I haven't had it in fucking years, but... You'll never know how badly American workers are actually being treated. Let's take the same company, the same position, but in a different country. Here's a McDonald's in Denmark. The average McDonald's worker in Denmark, for doing the same low-skill job, makes $22 per hour. Well, hold on, you hear Reader's Digest scream from across the Atlantic. McDonald's workers in America get paid vacation days after just a year of work. Wow, enticing. In Denmark, when you're hired at McDonald's, not only are you making nearly three times what you would make in an America- Are you ready for the chud counter to this? Are you ready? Well, actually, it's only off the back of our workers that McDonald's, the great American corporation, is able to offer benefits to those goddamn socialists over in the EU understand me because that is unironically the argument that steven crowder and other idiotic americans and neoliberals for that matter actually i've debated neoliberals on the subject as well make about why we pay 10x the price for insulin here in this country when if you go over the fucking border to canada you pay like a fraction of the price and they say it's because we're subsidizing the rest of the world this is how devastatingly cucked the American working class is. This is how devastatingly cucked Republicans are. America first, baby! We will allow an American corporation to exploit our labor force so they can go and do uh, 
you know, so they can go and abide by the labor protections overseas, brother. American Mickey D's, you also instantly have access to a full year of paid family leave and a pension. No slaving away for a year to prove your value to the company. You're hired and you're treated fairly. Simple as that. McDonald's can afford to compensate all their workers like this, but they won't. Because US laws allow them to exploit American workers to the point where they're basically slaves, earning the bare minimum to survive, paying all of their income and often going into debt just to pay rent, and having no way to escape this vicious cycle because they're working such long hours. This is the case across all of America's low-wage jobs, of which there are many. The plight of the low-wage worker is incredibly dire, and all you have to do to understand that is look at how those same workers are treated in other wealthy countries. Let's move on to another topic, work-life balance. Fair wages are definitely part of this equation. If you're paid fairly, you don't need to work a second job, which will free up your time to be spent elsewhere. But we're going to focus on other metrics, specifically the length of the work week, vacation time, and parental leave. Let's start with the US. Most Americans would say that 40 hours per week is full time. That seems to be the general consensus. But, in keeping with the country's exploitative labor practices, the hilariously named Fair Labor Standards Act does not actually define what qualifies as full-time. That's left up to the employer. Okay, why does this matter? Well, think of your past part-time jobs. Did you get any benefits? Healthcare? 401k? Probably not. Most benefits, when they're offered at all, are reserved for full-time employees. Companies don't want to provide benefits because they affect their bottom line. America is all about cutting costs, and Remember to report anyone that mentions unionization to your Amazon supervisors. Oh, of course. Of course, brother. Of course. Providing workers with fair compensation is a cost. So, imagine you apply for a full-time job at Best Buy. You're offered the job, but they tell you they only have part-time positions, but they can give you almost full-time. They make it sound like they're doing you a favor, offering you more hours than normal part-time. But this is just another example of employers exploiting their workers. If you work 37 hours per week, you're essentially a full-time employee, but they don't have to provide you any sort of benefits. No health care, no vacation, nothing. This is a common practice. Companies will hire people, but keep them just below the threshold for full-time to avoid providing fair compensation. I've seen it happen. I used to work at Best Buy and they would do it all the time. And that's just the companies who are still trying to appear generous. Others will simply not offer benefits at all or set the- Dude, whenever people say there is no minimum wage in Denmark, I lose yet another brain cell. Like I lose more brain cells when I hear Republican talking points. I wonder why there aren't technically any like federally mandated minimum wage, uh, minimum wage restrictions in countries like uh, Finland, for example. I believe Finland doesn't have a minimum wage uh, a minimum wage either. I wonder why there isn't like state mandated, uh, state mandated minimum wage. Oh, because when you look it up, the union contracts actually encompass nearly the totality of the labor force. If it's not already 90% plus, that's already unionized. And therefore a minimum wage would actually lower the fucking, uh, the, the, the price that unions are able to contractually get through collective bargaining agreements with their capital owners. It's such a disingenuous, horrifically fucking brain dead take to be like, ha, huh, well, Norway doesn't have you. Norway doesn't have minimum wage. Oh, okay. Well, that's great, dude. You are comparing an empire versus a village. Yes. Here's the difference though. That village is happy and this empire has slaves and you are one of them. And you're literally defending the empire right now that is enslaving you. That's the difference, you fucking moron. Okay? And it's not a, uh, a village in Denmark either, but it doesn't matter. I just like, I'll, I'll go on your fucking terms too. You're not American, you're Turkey, go home. Only in America do fucking idiotic Americans turn around and say, hey, advocating for more, uh, more rights and more benefits for the working class? Well, fuck off. That's on American, goddammit. I love working a minimum wage job that hasn't fucking functionally increased uh, with the exception of like one time um, since like 19, this is the 1970s. And when adjusted to inflation is like less 
worth less than whatever the fuck I'd be making in my in my daddy's time. Fuck you. That's un-American. I want to work every single day. I don't want to have any paid benefits or any paid time off or paid sick leave. Okay? Fuck you. Go back to Turkey. Go back to your own goddamn country. Only, only in America do uh, the American working class say shit like that. Okay? Their full-time positions at 50 or 60 hours per week. Sales positions are notorious for this. They'll often say, well, we expect you to work 40 hours, but all the top sellers are working 60 to 70 hours per week. This is coercion. They're trying to pressure you into working more hours to benefit them, and the compensation is never what they claim it will be. By allowing employers to define full-time work, American workers are held captive by corporations, forced to either work absurd hours to qualify for full-time benefits, or find a second job to help cover the cost of things like health insurance. Both of these options lead to a terrible work-life balance, and as real wages have decreased and benefits have been offered less and less over the years, huge numbers of American workers have developed an unhealthy work-life balance. For example, in 1960, when workers had real bargaining power, only 20% of American women worked. Today, 70% of children live in households where both parents are working full-time. Where does all this lead? As of 2020, over 85% of American men and 66% of women work more than 40 hours per week. We work 137. Not true. There are chuds in every freaking country. USA is their perfect world they would like to have locally. The difference is the chuds are louder here in the United States and our fucking capitalist media actually heightens their voice. Okay, that's the difference. more hours per year than Japanese workers, 260 more than the British, and 499 more hours per year than the French. Why do other countries have such a better balance? Because many of them have laws that cap the length of the full-time work week. Companies are required to pay their workers fairly and allow enough time off for employees. The best part about this, of course, is that your entire health insurance, if you are eligible to go full-time, um, your health insurance is tied to your job if there if your job has uh, allowed you to get that benefit what's uh, and and as soon as you're fired for i don't know maybe taking too many fucking sick days off or some shit like that then you're fucked you don't have health insurance oh wait but the democrats have a perfect solution for that um that corporate health insurance that you uh that you were literally paying with your paycheck well now you can pay uh, for that corporate health insurance in order to not get kicked off your coverage by what is known as Cobra. Let me tell you how much I pay for my platinum healthcare package that I got from the Young Turks. $666 a month. That's exactly how much I'm able to pay for my Cobra benefits so that I can, so I don't get kicked off my health coverage that I already had. Yeah. If I didn't have Twitch, I'd be so fucked. I would be perma-fucked. Forever. And I almost got kicked off that coverage too. ...to maintain a healthy work-life balance. That's not the case in the US. Vacation time is a similar story. Whereas many other countries mandate that employers provide paid vacation and sick days, the US does not. In every industrialized nation, workers get more paid vacation days and holidays than in the US. Here's a depressing graph to illustrate just how poorly we treat our workers. France, 31. Spain, 34. Austria, 38. America, 0. Zero paid vacation days, zero paid holidays. And remember, these are the mandated figures. Every Austrian worker gets a minimum of 38 paid days off per year. Even in the worst possible it's communism, brother. That's fucking disgusting. That's disgusting. I'm getting triggered thinking about that, brother. What the fuck? 38 days? What the fuck are they doing? These goddamn Europeans. ...employment situation, they'd still get 38 paid days off. In the U.S., many workers are lucky to get Christmas or Thanksgiving off at all. And the odds that it's a paid holiday? next to zero. Let's move on to our final comparison, paid parental leave. Many Americans aren't even aware this is a thing, so let me explain. 
When an employee of a company has a child, sometimes they're offered parental leave, a period of time where they can stay home from work to bond with and take care of their new baby. This greatly benefits the employee, the child, and in the long run, the company, because the employee will be happier, less stressed, and more loyal to the company. Of course, offering paid parental leave doesn't benefit corporations in the short term. And if there's one thing that encapsulates the American business philosophy, it's short-term gains over all else. So it won't surprise you to learn that the US is the only industrialized nation on the planet that does not mandate some amount of paid parental leave. This may be shocking to my American viewers, because being able to get paid to spend time with your newborn child sounds like an impossible dream in our We literally made fun of a baseball player for wanting to get paternal leave. Like, the entire country got together and made fun of a new father for wanting to spend time with his child. We're like, what are you, a fucking woman, dude? What are you, a pussy? Paternal leave? What? The fuck is that, dude? What? What, are you gonna milk the baby? Huh? With your titty? Is that what you're gonna do? We're so fucking dumb. We're the dumbest country on the planet, dude. We're literally the dumbest. And we think we're the smartest, too. We think we're so fucking smart. Yeah, fellas, is it gay to demand paternal leave? <laughs> exactly. Or maternity. It's not paternity leave, isn't it? Isn't it like when the fucking father asked for maternity leave? Yeah, I said it right. Lol, you want free healthcare? Be a man, pussy. Imagine eating doctors. Exactly. Dystopian labor market. And honestly, it probably is impossible in our current America. We're so invested in self-destructive capitalism that even suggesting the possibility of paid parental leave would put US politicians out of a job. That's not the case in the rest of the industrialized world. In fact, every other OECD <coughs> nation, and even in many third world countries, new parents are guaranteed at least several weeks of leave. Let's take- And then we get mad. In America, in America, we fire women for having children. We look at women as like uh, a, a person that we probably shouldn't elevate in a career Specifically because, like, they might fuck around and, like, literally fuck around, by the way, not figuratively, like, literally fuck around and, like, have a child, you know? And limit their career prospects. And then we turn around and we're like, dude, it's just because, like, women aren't just as smart or as strong. They're just not as strong as men. Like, they wouldn't be able to carry as many boxes. Well, okay. I'm applying for a position in a big four accounting firm. What the fuck does... What the fuck does picking up boxes have to do with anything? Idiot. Take a look at a few of them. Ethiopia, a country with an annual gross national income of under $900 per person, offers 90 days of leave with 100% pay. Madagascar, 14 weeks at 100%. Afghanistan, 90 days. Denmark, 52 weeks. Norway, 56 weeks. France, 16 weeks at 100% pay for your first child, up to 26 weeks for your third, on top of 104 unpaid weeks. Lithuania, 52 weeks at 100%, plus an additional 52 weeks at 80%. Again, the United States does not mandate a single day of paid parental leave even for the mother, and the father is never considered. This means that workers in America have to choose to either pay the exorbitant cost of childcare or have one parent quit their job in order to take care of the child. The of course, the difference between this and slavery is that you want your slaves to, to have children so that you can have more slaves. Whereas in this circumstance, like American capitalism is so accelerated where they're like, no, 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 I don't want my, like there will be babies anyway. Like I, I, I'm going to make sure that like, I'm going to make sure that like the people that are working are, are productive and so productive that they can't even go and fucking have a child.
These are both bad options, which often lead to economic precarity. But that doesn't matter to the companies employing American workers. Profit is the only thing that matters. Hopefully seeing these labor practices compared like this has made it clear that not only is the US not living up to its claim to being the greatest nation on earth, but also that it consistently ranks poorly and often dead last in terms of labor metrics. Why is it that the wealthiest, most powerful nation on earth can't pay their workers a fair wage, or provide health care, vacation time, or paid parental leave? You should realize by now that it's not that they can't, it's that they won't. Everything in America- Listen dude, if you're in here, there's 27,000 people in here. If you're watching this and you're seeing all these fucking Europeans in the chat like freaking the fuck out and you're an American and you weren't even aware that a better future is possible, I hope this is a radicalizing moment for you, okay? I really hope you just like sit down, take a deep breath and recognize that like, oh my fucking God, we really do fuck our working class harder than any other country with the same kind of capabilities, okay? Just remember, we are fucking horrible to our own working class. And then motherfuckers come into my chat and they're like, dude, shut up. You wear expensive clothing and you're a fucking communist and you live, you're a bi-coastal elite. Meanwhile, he's like, his daddy is a fucking oil baron from Texan, Texas. So that's why he's more American than me. You know what I mean? And he cares more about the workers. They love that shit. Texans love that shit. Uh, you know, putting on fucking some, some gator boots and turning around and acting like uh, someone like AOC does not represent the working class when she's in an infinitely poorer district than someone like Dan Crenshaw. You know what I mean? Dan Crenshaw, uh, Harvard and Tufts uh, graduate, by the way. Maybe some of the things stated are why America's considered the greatest. Dude, America's not considered the greatest. If that, if that's a fucking metric of success, then holy fuck, the USSR blew America's back out with its acceleration and its advancement in over such a short period of time. Like, if we're not gonna, if we're not gonna uh, factor in conditions, happiness, like, benefits that you fucking get, then, then you sound like a fucking... Stalinist, unironically. Like, what good is it if the wealth and prosperity doesn't trickle down to you? At least with the USSR, like, they didn't have that, they, they, they had a limited amount of fucking wealth that they could generate to begin with, with what they had. We have no excuse here in the United States. America's not considered the greatest. Americans consider themselves the greatest. Why do people keep coming here? Because, first of all, it's not like people from fucking Norway are coming here. People from countries that we've devastated are coming here. You understand? Like, because a part of the reason why we're the wealthiest nation on earth, or, well, that's not in air quotes, that's literally true, is because we keep fucking, we keep long-dicking every other country on the planet. The ones that we can, at least. So then those people are like, holy shit, I would rather risk it in America and make nothing, like barely make ends meet and live under the fucking radar at the constant threat of like the Gestapo force knocking down my door and kicking me out of this, uh, kicking me out of this country, than live back home in a country that America has already devastated. Okay? That's why people keep coming here because we are demons, okay? We fucking destroy every other country. We destroy every other country, either directly through direct conflict or indirectly through our, our enforcement of global, uh, our, our, our control over global financial markets or foreign capital, uh, our prevention of foreign capital from entering your country or foreign capital pulling out. Like, we put embargoes on people all the time. 
Or we literally are just like, oh, really? You decided to nationalize your extraction industries? Well, very cool. Here's a coup for you. Here is a paramilitary death squad that is fascist that we're going to train with our own military and destroy your country and inevitably overtake. Because in the eyes of America, Batista is better than Castro. That's just the fact. Okay? They would rather have a violent military dictatorship, a far-right fascist, violent military dictatorship control the natural resources and, and be, um, uh, be favorable to the American uh, government and American capital than a, a communist or a socialist. They would never do that. They don't want that. It's not, it's not good for our bottom line. It feeds into our illegal labor industry. All of the destabilization over, uh, overseas feeds into our war economy. Yup. Also, the second part about it is cultural imperialism. Hollywood is very good at making America seem better than it actually is. The land of opportunity. The American dream. In the words of George Carlin, the American dream is only a dream because you have to be fucking sleeping to believe it. Okay. To, to ever realize it, you have to be literally sleeping. Anyway, top of the hour, every hour, 60 second ad break for you. Coming to you live. Top of the hour, every hour. And then we'll finish off this video. If you'd no longer like to see ads, you need to subscribe, bucko. Anyway. I think India is the best example of American British cultural hegemony and colonialism. Yeah. A house, a car, and a family. The American dream. So. Well, oh, Trump war room is crying about Joe Biden's uh, take. Like those ugly. This isn't a political statement like those ugly folks over there. Beeping the horns. <sighs> Let's keep going. Uh, ...is beholden to the almighty dollar. Profit is the only motivator. If an action does not produce a greater profit, it will not be considered. Over the last few decades, Americans have watched as our livelihoods, our quality of life, and our dignity have all been stripped away by those who already make obscene amounts of money. Those in power say we're all in this together, but that couldn't be further from the truth. The ultra-wealthy and the world's largest corporations rely on Americans remaining ignorant. They rely on us accepting the lie that America is the greatest nation on earth, that it couldn't possibly get any better. All you have to do to shatter that lie is to take a look around the world. Other nations take care of their citizens. Even impoverished nations or nations that we've bombed into oblivion take better care of their people than the US does. American workers need to relearn the language of class struggle and work together to break the wheel of the capitalist machine. If we want to claim that the United States is the greatest place on earth, we need to make it that way. I mentioned at the beginning of this video that this kind of content is supported by my patrons on Patreon. This type of video, while very important, is something that sponsors won't touch. In order to pay the bills and keep this channel running, I rely on AdSense revenue, sponsors, and donations from generous viewers. By producing explicitly anti-capitalist content, I lose out on both sponsors and AdSense. If you enjoy the kind of videos I'm producing and you're able to chip in even a dollar a month, I would greatly appreciate the support. You can find my Patreon page and join our growing Discord server at patreon.com slash second Sometimes you gotta let them have a little bit of ad. Why the LGBT rights 